All right, here's how you do a credit spread. The first thing you do is you open a options account so you can actually play options. A credit spread consists of selling a put and buying another put. If you don't know what a put is, you can see my other video on a very intuitive explanation, but just to give you a brief understanding of what it is, basically if you sell a put, you are taking money from the person who buys the put from you, which is usually a market maker, don't worry about the details, but the idea is you immediately get some income because you're putting yourself at risk for some sort of bet. I'm going to give you an example here. I'm looking at this ETN, it's basically a stock. You can use whatever stock you want, but I'm going to use ETN because I recently played a credit spread on this uh, ETN right here. So here's what you do. You look at the stock that you're interested in making money on and you do a quick analysis. I'm a gap trader. All, almost all of my bets come from gaps and I see a gap in this stock right here. There's a gap between these two candlesticks. You can look at it as a line chart if you want but you can't see gaps unless you turn it into a candlestick chart. So anyway, you got this gap right here. This, you might be different than, than I, but this gap indicates to me that the stock is going to rebound and go above 32. And I believe actually in the long term it's going to turn around because, well, I've done my analysis. You can do your own analysis. But here's my goal. My goal is to get money right away instead of having to wait by buying the stock and waiting for it to appreciate. Because let's say I put in um, $100, I wouldn't get $200 back unless the stock went all the way, way up to 60 and we don't see that happening in the past, what, year or so? So you'd have to wait a year if the trend reverses, which is crazy. So here's what I do. I do short-term credit spreads, but I put it for the long term. I'll explain how that works. What I do is I sell a bet to a person who wants to take that uh, take the speculation from me. I'm taking the risk. He's speculating. He's giving me money, and I am taking the money because I'm putting myself at risk. And here's what I'm doing. I sell him a put option that says if VXX is below 31, I believe it's I believe it's going to be all the way up to 33, but I'm saying 31 because it sounds safer, or 30 even. So let's just say 30. All right, so I believe that um, this stock is going to bounce back up to above 30 before September. And if it does, what I can do is I can buy back the put option that I sold to him at a cheaper price because it's going to be worth less money. So what you do is you sell a put above or below, it doesn't matter, but if you're rather bullish on the stock that, and you think the stock is actually going to increase to a point above that number, then you might even want to sell the put um, when the stock is below that number because you make a lot more money. So what I'm doing is I'm going to sell a put at 30. So I'm going to go into my account. I'm going to go to trade. I'm going to choose spreads. I'm going to put in the symbol for the stock or the ETN or whatever. And then you're going to sell a put. Now I'm going to put this below because E-Trade is picky about where you put the um, buy and the sell. They like the sell below. So I'm going to sell one contract. That contract is worth, um, well, I'll show you in a second. I'm going to sell one put contract and I'm going to go all the way out. Doesn't matter how far you go out, but the further you go out, the more money you can make. I'm going to sell this at, what did I say, 30, right? Okay, so if I sell this at 30, what I'm going to get immediately is an amount between these two numbers. And I'll determine how much that is. Now, if I just sold this, I'm exposing myself to a large risk. Each contract is worth 100 shares of stock. So let's say the stock falls all the way down to zero. In that case, I've lost a lot of money because we're at 28. If it falls all the way down to zero, 28 times 100, I've lost $2,800 to gain around, you got to multiply by 100 here too, to gain um, only about $700. I don't want to put myself at that risk. I don't want to risk almost three grand just to make six grand, even though that's a very low risk, I'm not willing to do that. Sometimes you might be, but in this case I'm not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to protect myself by buying another put contract, but I'm going to make sure that the put contract, though the expiration is the same, the strike price, 
the price we're looking at, I'm going to make sure it's well below, so not well below, but below what I uh, sold the, what below the other sold option strike price. So I'm going to do 21. Okay. So if I do 21, and I am selling a 30, then my max risk is the difference between those two numbers times 100, minus whatever I got. So I'm going to do the quick calculation here. It's telling us below how much you'll get. So immediately upon selling this, you'll get $542. But your risk, the difference is obviously $900. That's not your risk, but your risk is going to be what you can lose minus what you already gained. So it's going to be 900 minus 542. So now we've got a much better play because immediately we get 542 bucks. And if everything goes sour and VXX drops all the way to zero or below 21, actually, you're going to lose 358 bucks. But overall, that's a much better uh, reward to risk ratio because you're getting 500 and you're only risking about 300. Drastically different from what we saw if we just sold the put. So if you have an options contract, what you can do is you can sell a put slightly above or slightly below where the current stock price is trading. You want to do it around this region because otherwise you wouldn't make a lot of money on this play. And then you want to buy a put below the sold put. That's pretty much it. It's pretty easy. So that's what I did. You put that in, choose a net credit. You want to make sure you're making money and not buying this. And then you just put in the midpoint and go through the trade. I already did this, so it's going to tell me I, I can't do it, but that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions on this, leave them in the comments below, and please subscribe. I think that should be it. I covered it all.